I never dreamed about success. I worked for it. Esty Louder. My friends, each and every day, work for it 10 to 15 minutes. That's all we ask. It's got to be each and every day. Practice trade all you can. Take the, watch the videos, study, take notes, learn by doing. Let's jump into these charts. We see everything is up for the day. This is one of those magical days where everything goes up. We're going to jump first into the S&P 500. Yes, we see a turnover. I would call this a weekly vertical crossover. Is it a perfect one? Not perfect, but it's pretty good. The S&P was up 1.12%. And of course, we did have an up day on Friday. But overall, it is, of course, a down week. Let's stretch this out a little bit, take a better look at what we have here. As you look at the chart, you can see we have a spinning top, a longer wick on the bottom than the wick on top. We had a spinning top last week with that higher than average volume and then the rotation over. Not a picture postcard perfect rotation, but a rotation nonetheless with volume to back it up. We can see where the big down day was on Wednesday, had a down day yesterday, and then an up day. Again, not recovering much. What would we expect over the course of this next week? More down movement. Did you pull the trigger today to jump into this on a practice trade going down? SH would be the inverse fund that, again, I hope all of you have taken our training on inverse funds, how to make money when markets crash. That's what it's about. And of course, you see here on SH, the trade. We went ahead, of course, set this up, locked in. We had uh, 21 pips. That's uh, 21 cents. Again, this is a very inexpensive ETF. It's the inverse of, SA, of the S&P 500. It is SH. We went ahead and set our loss level at 1.83%. The same with the profit margin, where we'll sell half the trade and let the rest of it ride. We'll see how that runs. I hope you are practice trading these things, learning by doing. We can see the two-day and the half-day are well below that trend line. Hopefully, we'll be rotating that over the course of this next week. How have things gone for us so far on QQQ? It recovered some for the day, up 1.03%. But of course, that didn't make much of a difference at all with the gigantic drop that we've seen throughout the course of this last week as things plummeted down. And we are, of course, short the, S the NASDAQ 100 have been since we had this classic rotation over a beautiful one. A high with average, a little higher than average volume, a beautiful spinning top rotation over last Friday, which is when we pulled the trigger. I will show you the trade. I've already sold half the trade. When we hit the profit ban, things are still looking good. Of course, we garnered within that very short period of time 2.76% in the up move, sold it. And we're letting the rest of it ride the other half. That's what we do to maximize profit and then minimize loss. If we hit the loss point, things go all the way into the red. Then, of course, we pull that trade. Hopefully, before we take that whole loss there, usually we get pulled out before everything loses. But again, you can't win them all. But if you dedicate yourself to minimizing your losses, you set your profit amount you hit that time and time again. You limit your losses, two to one risk to reward ratio. Do you know how many trades you have to win on if you minimize losses, two to one risk to reward ratio? How many out of 10 you have to win on to make a profit? You only have to win. This is crazy. We have the training of it. In fact, I'm gonna put it at the end of today's video for you. Um, the always winning method. I want you to see. I want you to see the math on that. You only have to win four out of ten trades, less than half, and you're still moving in the right direction. I'll load it up at the end of today's video. I want you to see it. So, nonetheless, all that being said, in the queues, it is in still a strong down move, and we are continuing to ride that.
Mahoney. Let's move on to 20-year government bonds now. Up for the day, look at how, let me blow this up for you a little bit so you can see it better. Ended up with a doji. Now, this is a risky thing. Look at that big wick there going down. We had a little bit higher than average volume with the not quite interim high. This was the interim high right here, and it was the high you can look up at the right, right here. Let me go back. You can see it was 94.54. Then that was 94.30. This latest one, 94.40. So again, got close. I don't I haven't liked this chart for a while, but nonetheless, we did have higher than average volume this week. Pretty much have a doji here and with a long wick on the bottom. A little bit risky, but it is technically a wee, weekly vertical crossover. I don't know how many of you pulled the trigger on this one. I did not. We will see how that goes. We'll track it and learn by watching it. I didn't feel super comfortable with it. It could roll over hard this next week and we'll go darn, wish I had, draw, had jumped into that because it did technically hit our formula and we'll just follow it and see. There are reasons for me not to. Hadn't felt comfortable with this chart for a while. It's not been readable for a while and I just didn't want to do it. So maybe you did. We'll see if you were right. Let's go to gold. Gold, another one. Look at this. This was clearly an interim high. Gold then today up 1.05%, but it does qualify. Again, as we look at gold, let's zoom in. Another one of these dojis, not a crazy long wick on the bottom. I believe gold is actually going to head down. I could be wrong. It's right up there. Looks like it's bounced off this top again, this ceiling, we shall see as we roll into this next week. We can see the down pressure on the two-day chart. We can see how the half-day chart has pushed below, particularly what we saw on Thursday with that strong down move in gold rebounding just a little bit. I think it's going to keep going down. Did you short it? We shall see as the week moves along in your practice trades. Now, lastly, we go back to HODL. We are still long Bitcoin, of course, because again, we had a weekly vertical crossover last week. We had average volume with the interim low right here. We then saw we had a dead week, what we call it here, where it doesn't reach the low again. You had decent volume. Then it turns around. Not a perfect turnaround. We'd prefer a doji. I'm sorry, a spinning top. Don't want a doji. Don't really want an up candle. There's too much to catch up with if that next week sort of goes flat. But uh, it went up. In fact, last week, we saw that the high was 56.42. This week, I'm sorry, 56.42, 76.42. This week, 77.30. So Bitcoin still moving in the right di direction. Again, up 5.25% for the day. Looks good on the two-day. Looks good on the half-day. Bitcoin is a-moving, and we are long. Thank you so much, my friends, for being with us. We always love to hear from you. Particularly appreciate our Patreon members. I'm so glad these charts have been so fascinating this week, profitable and rewarding for your practice trades if you have been doing them which is what we encourage you to do each and every day. It doesn't cost you anything to practice trade. When you think you're getting good, take our training on fractional trading where you put just a little bit of money in so that you can practice setting your good till canceled sell orders when you hit that first profit ban and letting the rest of it ride. And again, you got a little bit of skin in the game, maybe $100, and you follow these trades and act like a real trader, and then you start learning the real nuances. And you learn the good habits, and you learn how to enter, you learn how to exit. You learn always to put your sell orders both in pre and post market, so you can capture that volatility. It's just the little things, but it's all about the little things. God bless my friends. All the best from the whole team at Charting Wealth World Headquarters.